Hello, hello. So on this video, I'm, I just want to share one scripture, one word of encouragement with you about praying for your future husband, and then I'm going to be out. So this is going to be a very short video. Um, and I'll probably pray while I'm live. I always say that and then I forget because I really only got a few minutes. I got to get ready to go make dinner. But, um, <clears throat> I want to share one scripture with you and then, um, I want to, I want to share the scripture and then I want to teach you on it just a little bit. Um, so wait just for a few more people to pop in and what is that red oh my prickles i was like why is that red in my background there should be no red in my background i had somebody come over here yesterday um to give me a massage and she said you love pink you're the pink lady because i have like not rose gold but what is this um Blush pink. I have it everywhere. This shade of pink all over. I have a pink ottoman, pink rug. She said, you're the pink lady. I was like, yeah, I guess. All right. Here's what I'm what I'm going to do. I'm going to pray real quick in tongues. I'm going to share the scripture. I need to go find it. Hold on. Let me put you on my phone stand. Um, and I want to talk to you about... A good time to pray for your future husband, right? The best time um, to pray for your future husband. How are you guys doing this Friday, by the way? How is everyone? I was up here the other day and won't nobody talk to me, so I left. So, just in case you don't know, my name is Sarita Foxworth. I am an author. I am a Christian life coach. And I am not a purchase to talk to myself. Or look at myself on video. So I like audience participation. I actually um, do care about you all. I want the best for you all. I'm not one of these pages. You know, there's some pages where I ran across the page today. And um, it was filled with amazing quotes. Okay, stuff that sound good. Stuff that you want to type amen. But then I was like, I want to see some videos where she's actually um, talking about something. And some pages don't have no videos where they're talking about anything. And then some of them, when they are talking, they ain't talking about nothing. Like they'll have a video, but they ain't really saying nothing. I am actually a Bible teacher. Um, I have credentials and qualifications. I have graduated from the School of Ministry. I am working on my Master's in Divin Divinity with a concentration in Biblical Languages because I am deep apparently as much as i ran from my calling of being deep the lord was like get on back into this deep end story that you are created to be deep and so therefore the women that are connected with me sticking around watching the videos you can handle the rebukes you are probably just as deep as i am and you are in good company um one of the reasons why i wanted to start this community i have a community on instagram i have one outside of instagram i have one with women in real life who actually meet and connect with each other i think i seen um did i see katori um so i i like to create a community of women of god that are actually can connect with each other and connect with me as well and the beauty is that you will meet other women that are just as deep as we are you and me <laughs> women who love god like talking about the word we live our lives we are consecrated we have strong convictions and um when you are in this community we can share our convictions with each other without somebody saying you're being too deep or it ain't that serious or blah 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 <laughs> whatever it is that people want to say when you're trying to tell them to uh stop drinking and close their legs and i don't care weed is legal you shouldn't be getting high you're a christian act like it so you know that's what we do around these parts now after that long introduction let's let me i want to give you the scripture that came to mind right before i hit the live button i said i want to encourage these women i just put a post up it said uh pray that your future husband is preparing for you as seriously as you're preparing for him the caption 
um, I encourage you to really be praying for your future husband, interceding over his life. And the reason is because us deep women, we have high standards and we have natural standards that need to be met. We also have spiritual standards. So let me just put this on out there to encourage you tonight as well. If you're a deep woman of God, anything like me, and other people around you are getting, you know, married, younger, and things of that nature, be not discouraged because you're deep. They don't have the spiritual standards that you and I have. And that's not a good thing. It's not a bad, well, it's more bad than it is good because quite honestly, we all should be living a fruitful lifestyle and being Christ-like. And then we should expect a man to also be christ-like but there are so many people that are far from god and then they will go and meet somebody else that's also far from god and they can get together whereas you and i have we have natural standards you need to have some money you need to be cute you need to take care of your business but you also need to be a man of god so when you add that extra layer of standard uh value not just morals, not just somebody who's kind and a good citizen and not out here knocking people out in the streets. We want you to have self-control, but we also want you to love God first in word and in deed. So once you add that layer up there, it makes the pickings a bit slimmer and your season season might be more lengthy. But that is okay because God himself will sustain you. I put that question up on my page the other day and I asked a lot of you all, what is missing and lacking from your life right now because you're not married? How would your life change? How would it improve? How would it get better? And um, what I want to encourage you with, the reason I did that is because I really wanted to see what everybody's response was going to be. I assume with some of the, and I was shocked by some of the responses. I was like, I never would have thought I would even see that response. And, um, but here's the thing. Um. Oh, I forgot where I was going with that. I lost my train of thought. Well, if you're new to the faith, this is the perfect place for you to be. Because um, one thing about me is that I'm not going to sugarcoat. I'm going to give you the uncompromised word of God, but I am a teacher. Which means that you'll be able to understand and follow what I say. So if I say keep your legs closed, I also will teach you how to have a successful celibacy journey as a woman of God. I'm not just going to say that. I'm also not judging you because God knows I done been there, done that. And I know that it don't, it don't lead you nowhere good anyway. Okay. So it comes from a place of experience, caring, love, calling, anointing. And by the way, like I said, I will help you. Um, with this journey so that you can be a woman of God who is strong in your faith. You are strong in your discernment. You are strong in your wisdom. Okay. You believe God. You are bold as they come. Hopefully some of this boldness will rub some of this confidence will rub off on you as well. It's godly confidence and godly boldness though to preach and teach his gospel. You definitely need to have it because people are always going to here's the thing. I'm going to say this and I promise I'm going to get to praying for your future husband. I am curating, I'm rebranding, I'm in the middle of rebranding, you probably could tell if you're looking on my page, and it kind of looked like, what is this, is that Sarita? Yeah, I'm rebranding, I am also um, relaunching and recreating, reorganizing, I'm shifting some things within my business, and I have, I do have luxury retreats, but they're going to be even more. So I'm, I want to go to another level of luxury, which means that I need to go to another level of service. Um, the expectations will be higher, which I'm fine with. But um, I also, I mean, I'm excited because I can go to another level of hospitality. Because once you insert, once you say something is luxury, it has to be different than average or standard or what you can get anywhere. And with that being said, I am paying more attention to other luxury uh, black business owners. Because I want to work with them and partner with them in hosting these luxury events for you all. Why is it that when I go to a, a luxury black owned business and I start watching their videos, listen to them talk, everybody got to be doing all this cussing. I have to ex I can't even listen because I don't talk like that. I know what the word of God says. And I, I also understand that, y'all, the reason why they call them curse words is because you're literally speaking curses over your life. Now, don't get me wrong. Before I came to the Lord, I cussed like a sailor. Every other word, potty mouth, me. Every other word was a cuss word. 
I got delivered from that. But I want to go into an environment with professional black people. Okay, they don't even have to be. It, it can be any. I like all cultures and all nationalities. Um, But I want to support my people at the same time. Okay? So I want to go into an environment with people who are doing great and amazing things without every other word got to be cussing or something that's just so disturbing to my spirit just carnal and mm. i'm like how come i can't just go and i ain't being too deep all i need people because i want people to be themselves but all I need is for every other word not to be a cuss word because I am a godly woman and I want to hear all that. I want to know about your luxury products and what you're offering and what you have to offer. But why you got to start going off with all this cussing and all this? So, with that being said, um, <laughs> over here, okay, around these parts, I am making sure that what I curate is a luxury environment and community for us to come where we don't have to it's like you gotta you know because if it's not available you gotta take whatever is available if you know what i mean when there are certain groups and environments experiences even events and it's like i want to go to an event but at the same time do we all have to be uh you know doing all this ungodly stuff does everybody at the event have, do we have to smoke hookah and do yoga? Well, I don't agree with none of that. I don't want to sit around you smoking hookah either. Like, cause you know, I, I am not here to, um, uh, make people feel bad or like they are less than, or I'm not even like that. Nobody feels that way when they know me personally and come around me. But when I go to a nice, environment or setting or atmosphere i don't want people getting drunk all around me smoking hookahs now they smoking weed because that's legal popping edibles and can't we just have a nice good upscale time without all of that you are hard pressed to find it so with that being said i feel like on my end <laughs> when we come together we are going to have some nice quality things and you don't have to expose yourself to demon spirits that want to enter in because of yoga or everybody asks you what your sign is as if that is of god and that is just as demonic as yoga is but because a lot of christians are uneducated or just don't care quite frankly you know everybody um they automatically assume that you're like that and i'll be thinking maybe it's because of my tattoos you know i got a lot of them i actually don't have that many i thought i had a lot but in the world we live in today, I only got six. I thought six was a lot, but people got like 20, 30 these days. Shoot. I only got six, though. But I think maybe because of the way I look, you know what I mean? And the way that I carry myself, which is fine because I am approachable. But at the same time, I'll be like, why are you automatically assuming that it's okay to behave this way around me? I am a godly woman. Can you stop cussing? Can you not smoke that cigarette in front of me? I mean, do we have to talk about what your sign is? Can you not even ask me that? I don't believe in that. I know you don't believe in that, but what month were you born? Don't, it, it, listen, don't even try to put me into what month I was born. And back on topic, okay? Praying for your husband. I, sh I was supposed to put future um, husband in there, not your husband. Okay, so when it comes to, um, hold on real quick. Let me just turn this off. Because that's going to bother me. When it comes to praying for your future husband, I want to give you a scripture. And the scripture is, let me see if I know about heart. <laughs> I think it's James 5 and, it's either James 5 and 16 or is it James 5 and 19? Um, uh, let me see here. Let's look at the New King James Version. Let's do 16 through 19 so I can see which one it is. Okay, I was correct. James 5 and 16. Hey, hey, I'm getting better. <laughs> so, in the New King James, all right, let me move this out of the way. Y'all in the way. James 5 and 
16 says, confess your trespasses one to another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Now, let's read this. I want to I want to read this in two, two translations. So I'm going to add a parallel. And for the, the person who just got saved, uh, a parallel is when you look at various Bible translations side by side so you can have a better understanding. So I'm going to open up the CEV is one of my favorite Bible translations, which is the contemporary English version. And then I want to open up the Amplified because the Amplified is going to make it a thousand times um, more. It's going to expound upon. Oh, I can't see this. Phone is in the way. Okay, hold on. Uh, disregard my McDonald's cup. I do not eat at McDonald's that often. And, and then the other day, yesterday, I was like, I want some McDonald's. And I went and got it. And then I regretted it. I was eating it like, ugh. This is like eating salt. Just straight up salt. A pound of salt. I said, I knew I shouldn't have came to this doggone Mickey D's. Okay. So, James 5 and 16 in the contemporary English version, it says, uh, if you have sinned, you should tell each other what you have done. Then you can pray for one another and be healed. <clears throat> the prayer of an innocent person is powerful and it can help a lot. Now, I'm going to tie this into your future husband because it is applicable. This is one of the scriptures that speaks to the power of intercession. Um, in the Amplified uh, translation, it says, Confess to one another, therefore, your faults, your slips, your false steps, your offenses, your sins, and pray also for one another that you may be healed and restored to a spiritual tone of mind and heart. The earnest, heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available, dynamic in this working. Now, you see why I love the Amplified version because it just adds so much oomph. To that scripture keep this in mind though you are the one that is the okay in the new king james it says righteous man in the cev it says an innocent person in the amplified uh translation it says the prayer of a righteous man so you are the righteous man now when you are thinking about your future husband I always encourage women to pray for him about those things that may concern them. Not that you're in fear, but simply you have had experiences and you have also had exposure and you ain't no fool. So you know that some men are out here trifling. And whenever you have those thoughts, not that you even have trust issues. God knows I don't. But whenever you are like, I want a man who is strong in his body so that he's not even tempted with lust. I want a man that's already delivered from lust when we meet, first of all. And then second of all, after we get married, that that temptation never has an opportunity to come in. Because do y'all know that as much as it seems as if men are out here slinging their penis from east to the west coast, it is actually not true. There are men who do not struggle in their flesh at all. There are men who do not struggle with cheating at all. So it appears, you know, especially in the world that we live in with all of the social media and the entertainment and the TV, all this insight and exposure, it would appear as if it's hard to find a man that you can trust, but that is not actually true. Not for you and I, because we are women of faith. Now, you have the ability and the power right now while you are unmarried and while your husband has not found you to intercede over his life because you are the righteous woman. And when you intercede for anybody, it produces power, tremendous power is what it says in the Amplified. That is dynamic in its working. You can release the power of God over that man of God's life right now so that before you guys meet, he will already be delivered from all of those demons, all those generational curses, okay? All of those bad examples that he has had growing up, if, if that is his story. He can be delivered from all of those things so that when you guys meet, it is not even a problem, it ain't nothing you got to be patient with him and pray him through. Uh, uh You've already prayed him through before you guys met. While you were focusing on your purpose, while you were being a woman of God who was working on herself and growing closer to the Lord and becoming more of a godly woman, you can go ahead and intercede for him. And he also can be working on himself so that y'all won't distract one another when you guys meet. If you meet too soon, 
You think he's not going to be distracted by all of your beauty? He's going to be distracted by your mind because you're so smart and he's like a smart woman. He's going to be distracted by your drive and your ambition because that's right up his alley. He needs somebody that can get with him, not somebody that's going to drag him down. And when you come around with all of the amazing package of a godly woman that you are, you will distract him the same way he's going to distract you with all of his manliness <laughs> and all of his, I don't know, spiritual fortitude, all the things that you want, all of the strength it is that you desire in an actual husband. It will, You will both distract each other. So now is the perfect time for you both to be working on yourselves while you are waiting to meet one another. And with that being said, it is a very good idea for you to go ahead and start praying for the man of God even right now before you guys meet. Now, here's a good a good tip for you. Whenever you start to have the feeling, where is he? Why he ain't coming? When he coming? How come my sister got married and she younger than me? Whenever you start to have all of those negative thoughts, feelings, emotions, oh, I'm tired of being here by myself. I want somebody to talk to. I was reading the comments. There was some women who said she just had surgery. She want a husband to take care of her because she out from the hospital. She need help. I'm like, girl, you need to hire a nurse. That's not what a husband's role is. Now, don't get me wrong. If y'all are married and you got to get surgery, of course, he's going to help you out. But surely you shouldn't be praying for God to send you a husband because you need help around the house because you just had surgery. God's purpose and intention for marriage is to be a reflection of the body of Christ. Not so that you can have a personal slave because... The, the responses that I've seen from, from women when I said, what is your life missing? One woman said a tax write-off. That was hilarious to me, though. She said, the only thing I need from my husband right now is a tax write-off. A tax write-off? Girl, you actually get a bigger tax write-off when you file head of household. Now, granted, you might not have no kids. So, yeah, I guess you'll get a bigger tax break. But I'm like, girl, a tax write <laughs> <laughs> just pray that God will bless your money. It don't matter how many taxes you got to pay. You still want to have more than enough money to handle business. I get it though. I get it. Trust me, I get it. Because whenever they handing out some of these checks that's coming through, I'm like, I'll take it. I'll take that one, that one, and that one. Thank you. Because Lord knows these 30, 40% taxes they want to take off of your business income is ridiculous i'm like how are you supposed to survive if you're taking almost half of the money that i earn i work hard to make a profit in my business and now i got to give it to you you ain't did diddly and you want to give my money to planned parenthood anyway i digress so i get that but um the point is this you know when you think about whenever you start to have a negative thought or a feeling or emotion turn that into a moment to pray turn that into a moment to pray all right. Um, when you start to feel lonely and sad, or you know what I mean? Because those those negative thoughts, because you're human, they're normal to come through. But they need to just pass through. They need to go quickly and fly by. They don't need to, to build a home inside of your brain and inside of your heart. And now it becomes a stronghold. And then all of a sudden you're depressed and desperate um, and you're lonely because you are not married yet. And you have nothing but negative feelings that are built up because you literally have built up. You don't need to allow those things to make a home, a comfortable home on the inside of your heart and your spirit. No, 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 no. You have a thought come through. And it's negative when he coming. Why he ain't here yet? Let it keep flying through. Let it go all the way through. And then go ahead and pray. Pray for the man of God. Pray for his heart. Pray for his strength. Pray for his walk with Christ. Pray for his money. I Did I put that on my prayer points? I pray for my future husband's finances to be blessed now. I pray for him to have favor right now. I pray for him to be working his way to the top of his career field right now. I pray for every investment to be profitable. No losses in any of his investments right now. That way, when he come forth, we ain't got to even worry about, do I make more money than him? And is he making enough? What? Why do I have to be? Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will bless him mightily. Make him a wealthy man of God. Now, Lord, before we, before he finds me, before, ain't going to be no intimidation. Intimidated? What he going to be intimidated for? If anything, he going to be inspired. 
If anything, he's going to be like, that is the help me for me. That woman right there, she got it going on. She working on this, this, this. She building this. We're going to build so much when we come together because she's already building. Hmm. Ain't no intimidating nothing. Pray for his money now. That his money can be blessed. Pray, pray for that now. Is it good to quote scriptures about marriage during prayer for your husband? Of course. Um, Lakendra, it is always the very best thing ever to quote scriptures because it is the word of God. This is how you could tell that you're praying in the will of God because the word of God is the will of God. So when you pray the word of God back to God, that's the most powerful thing you can ever do. A lot of times we pray from our emotions and we pray with our emotions. Here's a good example. When I'm praying for a good father, right? Because I have one and I want more. And I know that the scripture I'm basing that off of is Genesis 18 and 19. And there's another scripture that I found. Um, where is it? I, just a couple of scriptures I found. I don't have them memorized. But listen, here's what I did the other day. The other day, I was looking for scriptures about um, raising children. That was all I wanted to read. And every scripture I found about raising children was a scripture where the the author was writing to a father. Meaning the author of any scripture I read about raising children and what children should and shouldn't do and how you should treat your children and handle them. It was never written to the mother. Y'all know that scripture that says fathers, I can't quote it verbatim, but it, it says something like fathers shouldn't... Um, discipline their children too hard because they'll crush their spirits or something like that i so i I was i this is the beginning of my study so i don't have this all the way um i don't know all the scriptures verbatim by heart but here's my whole point right because she said pray the um pray the word of god you once i find scriptures that speak to fatherhood that is what I pray. That is what I speak. That is a part of my foundation of faith. I need to find my whiteboard because there's some, there's a visual that I want to show y'all. But I need my whiteboard and my whiteboard is buried in a box in the basement in some corner. I haven't located it yet. But as soon as I organize my basement, I'm going to break on my whiteboard because I really want to show y'all how to build a foundation of faith for this thing. And a part of your, because this is what's going to, what's, when you have a foundation of faith that's built on a word, you're unmovable, you're unshakable. It doesn't matter what's going on all around you or what somebody says. It doesn't even matter what the clock is saying. You know, when the clock starts talking to you, when the clock starts speaking and you're looking at the calendar like, okay, um, is this thing on? Lord, did you hear me? I pray, I fasted and prayed. I mean. Did any of my prayers make it or were they just evaporating into thin air? When the clock starts speaking to you, you have to have a firm foundation of faith so that you can be unmovable. Because the house that's built on the foundation of the word of God is not going to be knocked over because of the storms and the flood and the rain and all of those things that, um, that Jesus said when he was talking about those three houses. So, yeah, pray the word of God back to God. And if you want some scriptures about fatherhood, now I haven't, you know, I haven't fully studied this thing out, but I promise you, the more that I go in over the years and I start studying about children and families, and I'm really looking at mother and father, not just husband and wife, but I'm looking at mother and father and children. Every single time I go in to study that, I always see nothing but scriptures that point to the dads being a thousand times more involved in society will make you think they're supposed to be involved, you know, or what tradition of in, in a Western culture. Tradition in a Western culture would say that the husband goes to work, brings home the bacon. When he come home at the end of the day, he put his feet up. Uh, the wife cooks him dinner, rubs his back, and puts the children to bed. And then the husband really may say a word or two to the kids, and he really don't spend a lot of time. But I promise, the more that I'm reading the Bible... It's not that way. The husbands, the fathers were very, very involved with the children. The wife was the helper. Just like it says in Genesis, the wife helped him with the kids. It wasn't the other way around. He didn't just chime in and say, y'all you better listen to your mom. You better listen to your mom. He was so instrumentally involved with the kids that the wife said, she went back and reiterated what he was teaching the children. 
This is biblical. And then whenever you read the Bible stories of the, the fathers and the and the sons, the fathers were dealing with them boys. You didn't see Sarah dealing with um uh Isaac. You saw Abraham dealing with Isaac. Right? When the Shunammite woman's son died, where was he? He was a young boy. He wasn't sitting out home with her. He was out in the field with his dad. He complained to his dad that his head hurt. And his dad said, all right, let me take it to your mama. Because her job was to help. So if he po he supposed to be out with his dad working. If you can't work with your dad, then you go to your mama so she can nurse you back to health. And then when she, when she nurses you back to health, you right back out here with me all day. The, 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 the children was with their father. Now, I know that speaks to boys, though. I'm not sure about the girls. I will say that. However, my whole point is that um, the fathers were so instrumental. And whenever I go and I'm studying and I'm having scripture to use a prayer point for my future husband, that's what I'm referring to. He is a good father. He is instrumental with the children. He is pouring into them, teaching them to be godly. For all the women that believe it's okay for them, for the woman to be the spiritual leader and for the husbands to be some old backslidden mess. This is all outside of the will of God because he is supposed to teach the children how to worship God. Genesis 18 and 19, that's, that's the exact instruction that God gave to um, Abraham. He said, teach your children how to worship me, my ways, my precepts. It was always... It was always from God to the man, and he passes it down to the kids. And so for women in this world to be so lonely and desperate for a man to say, well, he don't have to, I could pray for him, and I know somebody who, and my husband wasn't saved when I met him, but now he is. Well, you, you've you been out of order from jump. And just because you did something that was out of order, outside of the will and the word of God, doesn't make it God's will for everybody. It was never God's will. And by the way, just because you got married, that don't mean nothing either. Because I don't really know what's going on behind the scenes. What I do know is that a man who is a spiritual baby is weak in his flesh. So you're trying to tell me that some spiritual weak man has been this amazing husband to you all of this time? Why you been why you been pouring the word of God? Truth be told, here's a revelation that I had. I kept reading these so-called testimonies again and again on my page with these old smart mouth women who want to say, "Well, I must have been I must have heard God wrong because me and my husband we married thirty six years, three 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 kids later, and thirty six years later, I was I was more spiritually mature than he was." And you know what I realized? A lot of those women were just as immature spiritually as that man was. Now, they claim that they were more spiritually mature, but they actually were not, meaning they believed the same things. So if you give your heart to date, fall in love with, and decide it's okay to marry a man who smoke, drink, cuss, and fornicate, but you think, you think you're more mature than him just because you go to church every Sunday, because going to church does not define spiritual maturity. So just because you go to church every Sunday and he don't, but you still do exactly the same things that he do. You still think it's okay to smoke, drink, cuss, and fornicate, even though you go to church every Sunday. Both of y'all are just as spiritually immature as the other person. It's just that you have a tradition that you follow. You physically go and warm a pew somewhere. And so, yeah, y'all can get married and you guys are actually the same. But now you want to come and testify and you want to say that you marry him and he was you he was less mature than you were and y'all are so blessed when the fact of the matter is you actually were on the same level spiritually speaking because you lived the exact same life it's just that you went to church but y'all were still the same y'all didn't live consecrated lives you didn't have um the same understanding and revelation and consecration. You know, it takes a certain level of spiritual maturity to stop having sex and to not have sex when you're with somebody. Because it's one thing to not have sex when you ain't dating nobody. And it's an entirely different story when you got a man and he fine and he look good and y'all are physically together. You know what I mean? Temptation is real for both parties. It's one thing to, to, to say, I my body is for the Lord and the Lord is for my body. 
when you have somebody versus when you're like, no, I'm celibate. I ain't having no sex, but you ain't even got no, you know what I mean? You ain't got no prospects. Of course, it's easy to not have sex when there ain't nobody to have sex with. <laughs> so anyway, my point is this. Pray the scriptures um, back to God. Uh, James 5 and 16 is the scripture that we are basing praying for your husband. Uh, it goes with the post that I just put up. Pray for your husband that he's preparing for you as seriously as you're preparing for him. <clears throat> Pray the word of God back to God whenever you have a revelation. So whenever you are spending time in the word, you're spending time with God. And you get your own personal spiritual revelation about um, the man, you know, a husband or a family or a wife or children. You know, take that to the bank because if God is showing you something in the word, it's for you. And it really doesn't matter who else um, agrees with it as long as it is biblical. Okay, I'm not talking about if you have some belief system and it don't line up with the word. But if you go and study the word like like what I just shared with you, I have never heard anybody at what well, that's not true. I heard Tony Evans say out of his mouth, because I don't follow him, but for whatever reason, I ran across this one video, and I heard him say that husbands has been the, uh, hus husbands have been commanded to raise the children, and he gave the scripture Genesis eighteen and nineteen, and I know that was the word from God because it sank deep down on the inside of me so much, and I never forgot it. And then every t other time that I went to study, and I'm just studying. You know, about raising a kid because I got one. Not that I'm studying to find out about my husband. I'm studying to raise my child. Or I could be studying the book of Proverbs just because I want more wisdom for my business. So I'm just studying, just general studying. And then I'm running across many other scriptures and examples that confirm the word of the Lord that I received that day. About the men raising the children. And I'm like, this is so good. Now, I've never heard nobody teach a whole lesson about that. I think that usually when they have the men's meetings, that's probably what, I don't know. That's probably what they're teaching them about, I'm guessing. I don't know what they teach them. In the, you know how the churches have the men's conferences and the, the men talk to the men. Maybe they share with them about that. But I have never heard that taught before. I never heard a whole lesson about that before. But I'm telling you that because that is the revelation that I have because that is where God wants my faith to be. That is where God wants my standard to be. And if you're in front of me right now and you're connected and you're listening and you know that this is a word, you know that this is an anointed vessel, you know that our connection is not meaningless. It is meaningful. If you know that and believe that and receive that, then God is also wanting you to raise your standards to that level as well. Now, you probably saying to me, Sarita, my standards are already pretty high. Listen, you can have high standards, but if God is still teaching and maturing and showing you things, just go ahead and add that. Because I didn't know nothing about the man raising the children. This was a new revelation probably two years ago. Before that, I didn't have that. that I was fully intending on being the main one to deal with the kids and just take care of him. So in my mind, I was going to have to take care of the kids and take care of him. That was that was what I seen. It was a woman who said, what did she say? Let me see. I was looking at my post and she said, I need a man to help me. A lot of women say that. I need a man to help me. What did she say? Take care of the kids or... And I said, girl, the man, you are supposed to help him. A man is not coming. Now, don't, I, here's what I understand. I understand a, how a partnership works. That's what I understand. But for you to want a man to help you because you just got so much going on, he's not coming to relieve your burdens. That's what Jesus Christ is there for. And as a matter of fact, you're going to have more on your plate when you get married because you got a husband to consider and be concerned with. He's going to have things that he require of you. So it's like when you have somebody, what did she say? She said, I think the only one person said, mm. oh, you know what? It probably was in my story.
Oh, yeah, it probably was in my story because it's not on my page. Um, the only thing that's on my page is this, this person, if it is the person, because there's no picture and it's not a new, real name. So I'm going to pick up my slack when I can't physically do it and recovering from a surgery. I'm like, girl, you need to hire a nurse and an assistant or some type of errand runner. But that's not the role of a girl to pick up my slack. I, now, it's different if y'all are already married, right, and something happens. But that's what you want her for? To nurse you back to health? Um, and men are not nurturing. So even when you do have surgery and he help you, he gonna be getting on your nerve. He gonna help. He gonna do his best. He's still gonna get on your nerve because men are not nurturing. You still gonna need your mama or your sister or to hire a nurse. <laughs> um. Anyway, you get my point. I don't know why this man commented. It's a man in my comments. I'm like, I'm married, but I would say purpose for my work. Excuse me. First of all, dude. The post is for women. The second thing is, what is missing or lacking because you aren't married? How you going to comment and say, I'm married, but somebody to help me with my work? Also, your wife is not doing her job. And why are you on my page saying it? I'm clearly not talking to you. <laughs> I don't understand. I don't understand people, y'all. Um. Okay. So, anyway, you get my point. Um, I appreciate all the comments, though. I ain't trying to make nobody feel bad. I appreciate everybody who chimed in uh, to the post. But it's just very interesting, the expectations that women have and, um, and everything that say that they are, you know, I'm not going to say that. A question in here, I'm gonna answer it. Does God care about lashes and wigs? What if you want to be humble but pretty as well? First of all, this is my favorite filter. Y'all know my eyes ain't light brown, and these are fake filter lashes. Look, <laughs> uh, I'm just too lazy to put lashes on every day. I am a lash kind of girl, though. So if you come to one of my events, I will have on lashes and a full face of makeup. Now, with that being said, does God care about lashes and wigs? Can you so so the fact that you're saying what if you want to be humble but pretty is as if you can't be both. You can be humble and pretty. Now, I am a beauty girl. One of the things like one of my hobbies is putting on makeup, doing hair. As a matter of fact, when I have my, um, I'm going to start having private events, right, for my boutique. And I'm going to make them luxury private events. And I'm going to have luxury self-care and skincare products. Now, with that being said, so I'm a beauty girl. There is nothing wrong with playing in makeup, putting on wigs. What would be wrong with any of that? Oh, you must have grew up in church where they said Jezebel painted her eyes black. And so, obviously, that is demonic. Here's where the problem comes in. The problem comes in when you don't have any self-esteem because you ain't got on no wig and no lashes. The problem comes in where you think that you need wigs and lashes to give you value. Now, I could turn off my filter and still think that I'm cute and the baddest thing walking around in the streets because I am confident in who God has created me to be. I am confident that I am cute to somebody. Every man that look at me is not going to be attracted to me. He's not supposed to be, by the way. And that doesn't change the fact that I'm cute because I am God's masterpiece. Let me give you that scripture to go read. Um, when you understand your worth and your value, your worth and your value is not defined by the fact that I get my nails done, the fact that I put on lashes or wear wigs. My worth and my value is because of who I am on the inside and the icing on the cake is that I'm all so cute. <laughs>
And she, here's the thing about, because you said something about being humble. You are not prideful because you want to look extra cute today. I'm not in pride because I got a filter with fake lashes. How? What does that have to do with... Pride is when you are like Satan who was cast out of heaven because he wanted to be God. In other words, he thought way too highly of himself. Just because you want to put on a wig and look extra cute does not mean that you are prideful. It means that you want to look extra cute that day. That's all it means. Pride is when you think you better than people. Pride is when you think when you look down your nose at people, that's pride. Pride is, okay, I got on lashes and you don't. So you are of less value than I am. That's what pride is. Pride is, oh, because somebody don't have what I have, they are not good people or they're not as good as me. That's what pride is. Pride is, I think I'm better than you. I know I'm better than you. Now, that's not the same as confidence because I will always tell you, I feel like I'm the best person that can help you to break a soul tie better than anybody else. But why do I believe that? Because God has sent you here. And if I'm, if I'm spending the season to help you only with breaking soul ties, God has sent you here. So I specifically could help you. Otherwise he would have sent you to somebody else that would have helped you already. So that's not pride. That is confidence in me knowing that I can help you. I am confident in who God has created me to be. Ephesians 2 and 10. It, it, you got to read it in the right translation. And it says God's masterpiece. But when you know who you are. So if, if you read Ephesians 2 and 10. And you got to read it in a new living translation. It says for we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus. So we can do all things he planned for us long ago. Now, when you read this in the New King James Version, which is always where you want to use as your foundation, for we are his workmanship, <laughs> created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in. You know what else, too? Here's what I think about. When I think about the fact that I'm a beauty girl and I like, I do my own. If you ever look at any of my professional photos, whenever we go to events, I do my own everything. And I thought about how God has given me the the desire, the skill, and the ability to do my own everything. So I don't have to pay somebody. <laughs> I was like, I could go. Because when I do pay somebody, they don't do it right. The very first photo shoot that I had, this girl did my makeup. And it was too, the, the foundation was not matched properly. Um... <clears throat> She didn't do my highlights and my low lights prop. She didn't contour me properly. I was like, she didn't even do it right. And in my in my photo shoot pictures, some of the pictures, my face look like a ghost. My face is so white looking and it don't even match my body properly. It is just off. The red, the red lipstick that she had available in her kit was not a good red that goes with my undertones. Because I have brown skin, but I have neutral undertones. And most most women that are my uh, complexion have brown skin and they have warm undertones. It's, it's very, very rare for you to have light brown skin and neutral undertones, right? So, anyway, the whole point is this. I know that because I enjoy that and I study that. So, when I show up at a photo shoot or at a live event, I can quickly... Get myself together and look professional as I need to be on my own without having to have a professional there. And I was like, this is a good, uh, like, it's like a benefit. So, um, anyway, it's, 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 just, it's like a bonus. It's just like a good thing. You know, it's a good thing. It's a good, it's not the main thing. It's just a good thing. It's just an extra thing. It's just, it's just a benefit. I don't even know how to explain it. Okay. So, does God care about lashes and wigs? No, God cares about your heart. Even the scripture in, I think it's 1 Peter or 2 Peter, where it says, don't adorn yourself or something like that. Um, have a quiet and a peaceable spirit is, is more beautiful to God than anything else because it's about the inside. You heard that before, uh, Rose Dior? It's the inside that counts. God cares about your heart. Now, uh, if your heart, if you're out exterior is reflecting what's going on in you we talked i talked about this the other day if if you are somebody who keep going and getting all of these uh butt shots 
and, and lipos and all of these uh, uh, treatments and, and whatnot because your inside is um, you don't know who you are. You don't believe that you're beautiful. You think you need to do all of those things to make you beautiful. That is a problem. It is the inside that counts. Now, if you decide that you want to go and get some work done, but you already know that you are God's masterpiece and you're just like, I just want to get this done and I have the money to do it and this is just something I want to do, then go do whatever you want. God is concerned with the souls that you're going to be getting saved. He's concerned with uh, your lifestyle being a witness for him. He's concerned with you glorifying him. He's concerned with your prayer time with him. He's concerned with you studying the Bible. He's concerned with you actually being a Christian. More than he's concerned with the fact that you like to wear, you like to switch your wigs up. Okay, and get the biggest false lashes. You know, they got the ones that go all the way up. And when she blinked, you like, girl, your lashes go above your eyebrows. Does God care? Is she winning souls? Is she preaching Jesus? Is she living holy? Does she know who she is in Christ Jesus? Get the biggest, biggest, baddest lashes. Okay. So that was a long um, answer to a uh, short question. All right, you guys, I'm going to go because I'm going to make dinner. It's 6.44. I'm so glad it's Friday, though, because we can both stay up late. Now, I like staying up late with William um, because I just don't feel like we don't have to rush to bed. Plus, we already took showers, so we're, like, good. But the reason I don't like staying up late with him is because he still gets up at the crack of dawn. I mean, the birds ain't even chirping yet. You already awake. You're supposed to wait for the rooster to crow. You're not supposed to be up before the rooster. He be up all early. It's still dark outside. Mommy, can I watch TV? What time? I'm like, it's a six on the clock. And I let you stay up late last night. So what happens is he's still sleepy. He's still cranky. So we can stay up late. But he don't know how to sleep in if we stay up late. And he has a cranky day getting on my nerve. So anyway, it's Friday. We're going to eat late. So we're going to stay up late. Which means that we're going to have a cranky day tomorrow. Uh, I'm just going to have to make sure that he gets his nap. But, um, so I got to go because I was only supposed to be up here for 10 minutes. She said, Melanin Maverick, you're married? I didn't know that because I, I recognize your handle, but I didn't know you um that you're married. Well, answer me this, Melanin Maverick, because you're married, but you're here and you're like always participating what do you get out of this page being that you're already married when everything that I do is for women that are not yet married? I'm so curious to know. Just like I'm curious about that man that was... I've seen his face before. I'm like, why are you here commenting? You're a married man. Nothing that I'm doing is for you. Nothing I'm saying is for you. What are you doing at Sarita.Foxworth? Curated for women of God that desire to be married. <laughs> Um, okay, Nurse MJ, I'm glad that opens your understanding. That's that's good. That's what I want to hear. Yep, let he needs to be a good steward of his finances. Why don't you support Planned Parenthood? Why don't I support Planned Parenthood? I'm a Christian. I'll leave it at that. Somebody gonna say, "What is that? You a Christian?" So, I don't believe in murder. I'm a Christian. I don't believe in murder. If somebody claims that they're a Christian and they support Planned Parenthood, that means that they, uh, they don't have a full understanding of what murder is. They don't have a full understanding of what abortion is. They don't have a full understanding that the Bible says that thou shalt not murder. It's really simple. It ain't even complicated. It's not complicated at all. People make it complicated. Well, what about this? What about that? What about this? What about that? Are you a Christian? Do you believe in murder? What about? Ain't no what about. Are you a Christian? <laughs> Do you know what murder is? Maybe you don't know the definition of murder. It's pretty simple. Pretty easy. Um, let me see. I'm going to the top. I can see. I read what amplified are those good. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So here's what I'll say about the translations um, real quick. Find the translation that you like, right? Because really there's nothing wrong with it. But, but always always keep the king james version as your main translation and then you can use other translations as a parallel to go side by side for greater understanding but the reason the reason you always keep the king james version is because the king james version is the only word for word bible translation which means the original bible the old testament was written in hebrew language that is not spoken anymore i didn't even know that i just learned that last year i thought it was the same hebrew that they still speak today no it's the ancient hebrew language the old testament was written in hebrew the new testament was written in greek when it was translated into english for you and i the King James Version is the only translation that went directly from Hebrew to English and from Greek to English and is word for word. So there's different translations in the Bible, which are just like the NIV, you know, the New International Version and the CEV, the one I like. Those are not word for word, but they're thought for thought. So they'll take the main points and then translate it into English. Um, but the King James Version is the only one that is a word for word. So every Hebrew or Greek word had an English word that you could use and replace. And so that's why you always want to keep the King James Version as your primary and then use the other ones. You know why? Because some of the other translations will jack up the meaning. Some of those other translations, even though you like them, it'll take what the scriptures say and it'll turn it into something else. You're like, wait a minute. So, you always want to keep the King James. And I like the new King James because the only thing the new King James did was take words like thou and thee and turn it into you and me. <laughs> but it didn't change anything else. So, it's still word for word. But it's just not the old English language. All right. Um, and by the way, if you want some Bible recommendations... If you go to the link on my bio, the very last link that you see says Sarita's Amazon recommendations. And I have Bibles that I use on that list. I have the Keyword Study Bible, which has the Greek and the Hebrew, has a concordance in it. I have the CEV Challenge. I like the, uh, the Challenge Study Bible because I like the, the commentary in the Challenge Study Bible. It's very easy to understand. Um... I have the concordance, just a straight Bible concordance. So you can look up every word in the Greek and the Hebrew and see what it means. I have the parallel Bible that I use. So the one that has the King James, the Amplified, the NIV, and the just another translation that I don't use that's in there. But it's a four, uh, four Bible translation Bible that I use. Uh, what else? One, two, three. That's three study Bibles. I have the, the historical and the cultural. That's my favorite. It's a historical cultural study Bible, which tells you the history of the scriptures. That is my favorite one. So if you want some different Bible translations and you trust me and you'll trust my recommendations, go to the link of my bio and you'll see those on Amazon so you can order yours. All right, T, I'm going to go. I'm not even going all the way up to the top. What if marriage ain't for all of us? I'm only talking to people that are called to marriage. If, if you are not called to marriage, all of my messages, all of my encouragement is going to get on your nerve and you can unfollow. Um, because you're called to be single and you're like, I don't even want to hear, I don't even want to be married. Well, then you wouldn't be here, right? My message wouldn't be attractive to you. You wouldn't be following a live stream video. If I'm talking about interceding for your future husband and you have to get the singleness, which means you're never going to have a future husband. You wouldn't even care about this topic, right? So, because people always come through here and say that, well, what about, well, if you are never going to be married or have children, then go ahead and exit out. Like, why would you be looking at my eyeballs right now? Blows my mind. If I know that I'm a Christian woman and I don't smoke or drink, why would I go to a Hennessy live stream? Why would I go to the Hennessy page Follow them and then sit on a live stream and say, well, what about those of us who don't drink? That's stupid. I wouldn't even be there. Right? It's, it's, it's easy. It ain't rocket science. People who are not called to marriage, they always come on my page when, when they disagree with everything. I'm like, 
you are free to go elsewhere. I'm not even talking to you. I'm literally not talking to you. I didn't create the post. I don't come to work every day. I am not pouring my heart out right now. I didn't hit this button and decide to read these scriptures. If you have the gift of singleness like Apostle Paul, I am not talking to you at, at any point. I'm never talking to you. I'm only here to encourage women and guy that desire to be married. You're single right now, but you desire to be married later on. You know, you, you will be married um, at some point. Because you have to get the marriage you're called to marriage. You can't shake it. You know, a woman who has to get the singleness, she's like, um, she might have wanted to be to be married, you know, when she was younger. But the more she starts to see what goes into a marriage, what happens in marriages, what you got to deal with when you're dealing with a man every single day, she's like, mm, I'm good with just Jesus. Or, you know, there's women who have gotten married just because of the culture. And then after, after their husband dies <laughs> or they get a divorce, they're like, I don't want to be married ever again. No. They could just spend their days devoted to the Lord. Yeah, um, I am going to go ahead and upload this video. I deleted the one the other night because I was a little irritated. I ain't had no audience participation. And, um, yeah, I need audience <laughs> I require audience participation. I can't come on here and just talk to myself. People just looking at me. Well, what you looking at? Because I don't need you to just be staring at me. Now, I need you to listen, receive, answer my questions. See, I got a good crowd tonight. So, I'll go ahead and post this. And you know what else happens when people are really listening to the message, the anointing can flow. The Everything that God has placed on the inside of me that is for you can come out. But if people are sitting in front of me and they're not here for the anointing, they're just looking at me or passing through or waiting for me to say something so they can disagree. Wait until she, did she say what I, oh, let me, did she, oh, she ain't saying it yet. Let me wait for her to say something. She said one thing, I'm, I'm ready. Yeah, so anyway. With that being said, I, I remember I used to do videos and people used to come into my video just to tell people to go somewhere else. Like, they'll be like, if you disagree with what Sarita's saying, go over here to this page. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> Why would you come into my video? Just to tell people to go somewhere else. Why don't you build up your own following and go talk to your own people? Why would you come over here and be so disruptive? I'm like, and the people that's looking at me got more rapport with them than you do because you were just a stranger in the comments they don't know you at all at least if they watching my video they've seen a post they read a caption they've done something <laughs> why would you come anyway but I don't, I don't have that happen no more those are some fun times boy fun times that was you know back when i had like four thousand followers i did a lot of arguing Woo. i was watching some videos the other day Cause I was trying to find something to upload from back from back in 2018, 2019. I did a lot of back and forth with people arguing. Mm, it ain't so bad these days. Thank thank the Lord. All right. Well, I'm glad that you guys are very blessed. That is always my goal. I don't have any agenda here. <laughs> Excuse me. My only agenda and motive is to bless. I am a Bible teacher. I'm here to teach. I am anointed with the gift of encouragement. So I'm here to encourage. Um, you probably got that already. You probably like, oh, these captions. You know, people always say that. These captions speak directly to me. I know. It's supposed to. I'm not copying nobody else's words and putting them up there. All of those words came out of my heart, my spirit. And I try my best to make sure they came from the Holy Ghost. You know what I mean? So I'm like, yeah, they're supposed to speak to you. That's called the anointing. That's how you know that you're supposed to be here. And um, that I can help you. So anyway. Go oh, where do these questions come from? When did y'all put these questions in here? Because I didn't see any of them. Are you doing another six-week coaching program? Probably not, because what I want to do is I want to elevate. So I'm rebranding, and I am elevating. I am taking my business a little bit higher. 
So what that means is I'm going to have a retreat and built into your retreat ticket price is going to be private coaching. That's what I want to do. I'm also going to have actual private coaching days where you can come and meet with me in person for a whole day. And those are going to be your only options. Unless I'm helping you write your book. But when it comes to coaching with me, I want to, I really want to work with women of God who are serious. And I want to be able to serve you at a higher level. In order for me to do that, everything is going up. So I'm probably not going to do, I do not plan on doing six-week group coaching no more. I really don't plan on it. I really just plan on doing VIP days and retreats. And we're going to meet in person. And that's going to be that. You either going to meet me in person or you're going to watch a live stream. <laughs> so, yeah, you got to fly. You got to come on. You got to come on. Hop on the plane. Everybody has to Everybody has to hop on the plane, though. You know? What, the last time I had my retreat was in Virginia Beach. None of the ladies was local. Nobody drove from. Everybody came from out of state. You got to fly. But when I meet with my coaches, if I'm going to go and meet with them in person, I got to fly. I mean, everybody has to travel. Even when I was in Atlanta, I was like, I'm finally in Atlanta. Ooh. But the woman that I really, 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 really want to work with is in Houston, Texas. I got to get my butt on the plane if I want to go meet with her in person. So, but I can promise you this, it's going to be well worth it. Cause I, I'm so excited for what I'm like, what I'm doing. It's going to, everything is going to be a luxury for you. Whether you come to the retreat or whether you come to meet with me in person, I'm getting like a, um, the spaces that I'm looking at. I'm going to put you up somewhere real nice, real beautiful, real elegant. And, um, and then we're going to work together in a nice, beautiful, elegant environment. And then the service, most importantly. All of the service that you're going to get. All of the concierge treatment that you're going to receive. Because I really want women to to take really, really good care of yourself. And to treat yourself to some things. And again, I want to create a space for us, Christian women. To be able to splurge. And have luxury, not low budget. You know, unfortunately, when you hear Christian, people expect everything to be free. But when everything is free, it, it also has to be low budget. Because you are depending on donations. Or whatever you can put put into it on your own, right? And when you're depending on donations and people are donating five and twenty dollars, you really can't do too much. <laughs> or if it has to be free, it's like, well, if it's free, fine. We won't be at the Holiday Inn. But I, I don't go to the Holiday Inn. So I'm like, if I don't personally do that, I'm I'm gonna be walking through this hotel. Um. We're actually going to stay there and I'm going to experience it and make sure that it is luxurious enough for you before I say that I'm going to have my retreat there. If it's not nice enough, if it is not, if the service is not where it needs to be, I'm not even going to have an event there because that's where I want to be and that's who I want to work with. I want to work with women and create environments and experiences that I would like to experience myself if I, you know, I only work with women who put on these, you know what I mean? But again, they do it, but they're not Christians. Ugh. I'm not going to your retreat because I do not want to sit around cussing. I understand you want to drink a lot of champagne because that's like this glamorous thing to do. But I don't drink at all. Nothing. So what am I going to do? When y'all popping champagne, doing yoga, and I'm paying for this expensive experience, and then I can't even, like, hang out with y'all like that. So, anyway. Yeah, start saving now. All right. Um, right. I'm going to answer one more question, and I'm seriously going to go. But let me see which question do I want to answer. Okay. Ms. Vero already answered that. So I'm going to answer Ja. Is it Ja East? Uh oh, where is it? I can't share it? Okay, if I can't share it on my screen, then I can't answer it. I don't know why it's 
Why is it saying that I can't um share it? Okay, hold on. If I can't share it, I can't answer it. I probably can't. Oh, there we go. Okay. Did Shepherd have it down there? No. Why? Because I had the llama pants. That was on the TV that you watching. Whatever you watching on TV, what you watching? You heard what? I'm watching children. You watching children? Whatever you heard was on the TV. Why are you whining? What's going on? Well, you need to turn the volume down on the TV. It's quiet down here. Listen, what you hear? Exactly. So that noise you heard came off of the TV in your room. And if it's too loud for you, turn the volume down on the TV. Why you got on different pants? What's happening here? We touched those other pants. I was cold. Those other pants were cold. They were cold or did you pee on them? I Sorry. You're too big for this. You are too big for that. You need to do better. All right, I'm about to answer this question and then I'm going to go um, make dinner for you. Um, Oh, you put a wait. Okay, so this is the same question. She said, "Oh, my stomach is growling, Lordy. I need to hurry on up." How to communicate? You need respect from someone without specifically saying it. You have to specifically say it, especially if you're talking about a man, right? You have to say it. Uh, one thing that I have learned is that men do not and cannot read your mind. <laughs> And you have to tell them what it is that you need, because if they don't, if they know what you need and they don't give it to you, it's because you didn't communicate that with them, or it's because they don't care about you. So it's it's one or the other. So an easy way to tell if somebody is for you or not, if they care about you or don't, is to tell them what your needs are, and then watch their behaviors. <clears throat> okay. Is that it? I think that was pretty clear. I'm, I'm going to leave it at that. Oh, you talking about you need to communicate that you need respect to his mom? How can I walk in love towards my wife his mother? She's awesome but has the wrong idea about me based off of boundaries. You need to let him deal with his mom. Y'all are not married. She is not your mother-in-law. So you need to talk to him and then he needs to talk to her. Now, if y'all are about to get married, let's say y'all are deep in a relationship, you're engaged, you're planning your life together, then y'all need to have a group discussion. But if y'all are still like not there yet, you still ain't got an engagement ring on your finger yet, y'all ain't planning to merge households together, if y'all are not there yet, whatever his mom is doing to you, he needs to deal with it. He needs to address that. It, that's his mom. So instead of you going back and forth with her, you know what I mean? It's it's like no point in you going back and forth with her when y'all might not even be together in a couple of weeks or months anyway. You know, you understand what I'm saying? Now, if you're engaged, it's a different story because y'all are, are going to be together. So you need to have a group um, conversation. Yeah, if his mother is being disrespectful, I'm, I'm still, I'm standing by what I just said. What do y'all think? Y'all that are that are listening to this conversation. If she is having issues with her boyfriend's mom, who is being disrespectful to her, she said, how do you communicate that with her without specifically saying it? How do you communicate with the mom that you're being disrespectful without? And what I'm saying that she needs to do is talk to him and let him deal with his mom because y'all ain't even there yet. But if you are there and you are engaged, he's not a boyfriend and other, he will be a fiance. Then y'all need to have a group discussion because she's going to be in your life forever. So then all y'all need to get on the same page. 
But if y'all are not at fiance stage yet, he need to just deal with his mom. Or you just, or you know what I mean? Let's, let's get to the point where we know that we're going to be in each other's lives. I remember, um, I wasn't, I wasn't disrespected by nobody's mom, but I will say that my baby daddy, okay, was trifling and some of the things that he did, I did not agree with. And I thought that I could talk to his mom and she would be on my side because I was like, this is so obviously wrong that when I talk to his mom, since he respects his mom, he listens to her. When I tell her what he's doing, she surely is going to check him and agree with me. And say no, nah. and, and and then I was thinking maybe she would help explain to him that he was in the wrong. Maybe he just wasn't seeing it right. Nope, she automatically took his took his side and was like, "Well, he's." She made all kind of excuses for what he was doing, and I was like, "You make an excuse for what he doing, but what he doing is wrong." Oh, so you don't think what he doing is wrong, which means that you are. What's the word I'm looking for, y'all? When a person encourages bad behavior, enable, you are enabling him to be this way. And in your mind, in y'all's mind, in y'all world, this type of behavior is okay. So instead of me taking issue with her, instead of me going back and forth with her or trying to convince her or trying to understand, I listened and I said, okay. And then I decided how I was going to move forward from there and it wasn't going to be with him in my life. <laughs> I'm like, all right, you and your mom, go find you a woman that's cool with what y'all got going on. Because as a mother to a son, I understand why you would want to automatically take your son's side. Because I got my baby back, right? I got my baby back no matter what. However, I can't say no matter what. Because there are times when he is going to be wrong. And if, if he is wrong, I got his back. But he also wrong. And let's say it was my son. Let's say my child was doing something to a woman. And he was dead wrong. And then she came to me. I would have to say, all right, I hear you. Let me talk to my son. That's all I would probably say. I wouldn't talk bad about my child to her for sure but i would be like you know what all right let me talk to him all right i hear you i hear you let me go and talk to him and then we'll just go from there let's pray about it let me talk to him let's pray let's go from there and then i would deal with him behind closed doors boy you know better how you gonna be you do i didn't raise you to be that way with no woman you better go back apologize get yourself together you know i would deal with him behind closed doors <laughs> You know what the words say? You a man of God. I taught you better than that. What the scripture say? You need to treat her well. So, you know, that's what I would do as a mother. But if, you know what I mean? If it was like some chick that he just met. And she think I'm being disrespectful to her because I'm saying that she's a floozy. She out here running around. You know, I got discernment. <laughs> and she like, I don't like him. Uh, she's disrespectful. I'm not disrespectful because I'm speaking the truth. Uh, I would be like, you just need to deal with her. You you go and deal with her because I don't even know how long she's going to be around. She's going to be around for a long time that we could talk, but sh this shit might be gone next week. Alrighty. Thank you for the question, though. Good question. Uh, how was the response? Do you receive the response? Was the response helpful to you? Um, ja Island. Was the response helpful for you? Um, and yeah, Miss Vero, as far as how else to stop feeling discouraged? I have like a thousand videos about discouragement. Like every single video is to encourage you. And I say a lot of the same things over and over again. My main thing for you tonight would be not to look at what is going on with other people. Because you said you're feeling discouraged because you're seeing other people. Here's one thing that I, it's a revelation. I read it in a book and then it got bigger for me about Eve in the garden. God told Adam, you can eat from any tree in the garden, but you, the tree the tree with the knowledge of good and evil, do not um, eat from it, right? And it was right in the middle of the garden too, so they could see it like all day, every day. And they knew that they were not supposed to eat from it. The day that uh, Satan was talking to Eve, the serpent, number one, she was close. She wasn't in the right place. She was supposed to be 
eating from the other tree. She wasn't supposed to be right up under the tree that God told her to stay away from. She right, but she too close. Are you all up on the tree? You know that's the tree that God said, no, don't touch you right up by the tree. And where is the devil? Right by the tree. He wasn't, you know, there wasn't like a cross, the garden, at the trees that God had given them permission to partake of. The, and by the way, the other trees were good. They were enjoyable. They were perfect. It was the Garden of Eden. It wasn't like the other trees had lemons. The other trees had mangoes and watermelon. Or can my favorite fruit is cantaloupe. The other trees had cantaloupe. They didn't have coconuts, something you can't even get, barely get, get it open. So God had given them all of this amazing uh, blessing all around them. And he's like, eat these trees, enjoy the garden, blah, blah, blah. But that one in the middle, stay away from that one. Eve was in the wrong place. She was too close to the wrong tree. So the devil was right there by that tree too. Just talk to, because listen, y'all, it wasn't like the devil said, look at the tree over there. Eve, the one over there that God told you you should consider. She was right by it. Because the Bible says that when when Satan started talking to her and saying, uh, look at the uh, uh, uh didn't did God not he, he was like, eat this. What did he say? Let me let me see what it says in Genesis. He said Genesis chapter is it two or chapter three? Let's just say Genesis chapter two and then let's go into three. They were both naked and they were not ashamed. Okay, so it's chapter three. It says the serpent was more cunning. And he said to the woman, has God indeed said, you shall not eat of every tree. And the woman said, we may eat um, the fruits of the trees in the garden. But the one in the, midst, in the middle of the garden, we shouldn't eat it or touch it or we're going to die. And then he said, you will not die. God knows if you eat it. And so, okay, ver uh, chapter 3, verse 6 says, So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took it and she ate it. Here's my whole point. She was looking at this tree, lingering with the wrong thoughts and the wrong words from the wrong person going through her head. She was too close to the tree. She was in the wrong place. She was looking at the wrong thing with the wrong thought. All of this was wrong. If Eve would have been in the right place where God told her she was supposed to be. If she would have had her eyes on what God told her to have her eyes on. A man, she had a whole husband. The whole husband that we all pray for. But yet, she want to eat something she ain't supposed to be eating. You got a whole man over here who's like, mm, bone on my bone, flesh on my, he all into you. You got all of this fruit, all of this paradise, you have every blessing, every prayer that anybody could ever want in life. And you looking at something over here, you in the wrong place, looking at the one thing, the one thing that God told you that you cannot have. And now you starting to desire and want and crave and your mouth is all watering for the one thing that God told you you couldn't have when you have everything else in the world available to you. And when we are single, Right, it is the same way. Even when we're married, it's the same way. You have things that your eyes should be on. You have things that God is like, focus here, look here, keep your eyes straight ahead on this. The Bible says it is not wise to compare. You start looking all around on social media. At, in social media, I promise you, it's like a tool of the devil, the devil's playground, but we're going to use it to glorify God. But I, because it's like before social media, you couldn't see everybody getting married every two minutes. The only people you could see is whoever was on TV and it usually was a celebrity. So it really didn't matter. But now with social media, you're like, these are regular people I'm looking at and they got these amazing lives and my life sucks. And now everybody around you is getting married. Everybody's posting their picture. Everybody this, everybody that. You're not even supposed to be looking at everybody. You're supposed to be looking at whatever it is God has told you to focus on. I went on Facebook. I don't even like Facebook. I hopped on Facebook today. I'm working on my website. I'm a part of a group where we're building our websites together. I hopped on Facebook to go and communicate with the group about building my website for the business that God has told me to launch and create. And it's a marketplace ministry. I'm supposed to be over here serving, working, building, launching. I hop on Facebook and the first post that come up is of a girl who was at my uh, first church and she's pregnant. 
And I was like, oh, she pregnant. So now I'm trying to see, is she married? Who's her baby daddy? Her last name didn't change. Well, maybe she just didn't change her last name on her Facebook page. Because, you know, some people do that. Some people get married and then they keep their maiden name on their pages because that's the name that they've been single for so long. Right? That's the name that everybody knows them by. So, that, so I'm, I, all of these thoughts going through my head. Look, I'm just like Eve in the garden. And Satan here talking to me. She pregnant. She married. She healthy. She fit. Because y'all know I'm on, I'm on a fitness journey like right now. I just started a workout regimen. So the girl is on the beach. I love the beach. She fit. She's like one of those trainers. So she's like muscular. She's got her legs in some weird position and her belly hanging out. She healthy. She fit. She pregnant. She on the beach. All the things that you want, desire, and love. <laughs> is she married? I don't know. I'm trying to see if she's married. And I was like, I need to get off of this. Because I'm about to sit here and let Satan minister to me and tell me about how... It ain't that deep, Sarita. See, there's another woman over here having a baby, planning her baby shower, got a man. She's happy. She's healthy. She's fit. She's on the beach. And you being all deep and you ain't got you. Now, I'm going to be on the beach. I was on the beach already twice this year. Um, just um, twice this summer. I'm about to be back on the beach again. But, you know, I'm in here working. She on the beach. I'm in here struggling to get these pounds off. She all healthy and fit. You know, I'm up here preaching the gospel, praying for a husband, praying for a man. And I want more kids too, by the way. So, you know, I can let the devil sit here and minister to me while I'm on her page looking at what she got going on. I clicked off of that page and I said this to myself. I don't care. Got back to work. What's going on my website? What's the saying in the group right here? I need to upload this, put this down, change this color, tweak these fonts, go to my bio. Let me stay focused on what God has placed in front of me and not on what everybody else got going on because it don't matter i didn't even find out but like, i didn't even find out the girl married who her man is is she still acting godly you know some people you go to church with it's a season and then they fall off completely so just because i went to church with her back in 2000 and you know 10 11 12 i don't know what she's doing these days i didn't even find any of that out because you know what i don't care i could care less it has nothing to do with me we're actually not friends you know, people on Facebook just know you. It ain't that y'all are actually friends. I could care less. It has nothing to do with me. And it surely is not going to make me feel bad about where I am right now and who I'm with or not with or who calling and texting. It's not going to make me feel bad about the season that I am in because she's pregnant and happy. It has nothing to do with me. So, how do you stop feeling discouraged when seeing other people? Take your eyes off of other people. Don't allow your eyes to linger on other people. Don't allow your thoughts to linger in some negative space. You have control over your thoughts. You have control over what comes into your eyeballs, into your ears. You have control over what gets planted and rooted in your spirit. You have control over that. Now, you can sit there and look at what everybody else got going on and allow yourself to just, it's like a, spy, a downward spiral of thoughts. Oh, she's married. I'm not. Blah, blah, blah. This, that, and the third. I've been waiting. I've been praying. Why God answer her? He ain't answer me. I mean, you can let all of it. All them thoughts you had. I promise I have had those thoughts as well. Because I am not a married woman. And I've been single and celibate for quite some time. All the thoughts that you have, I promise I probably have had the same thoughts. But do I get discouraged? No, not for one minute, not one day, not one hour. I don't get lonely. I don't get discouraged. Look me in my eyeballs because I'm telling the truth. I'm not a liar. I don't get discouraged. I don't get lonely. I don't get miserable. I am not desperate. I am in faith. I am, you know what I mean? I went to the barbershop today. And William is getting older, which means he goes to an actual barbershop, which is full of something to look at and i was looking now i had on my mask people not wearing their mask no more and i'm a little disappointed because that vaccine people are still getting sick with that vaccine so i'm like y'all need to keep your mask on hello you're not immune because you got a vaccine you can still get it and i'm quite sure if you have it you can still pass it where's your mask anyway i saw a little cutie in there he ain't had no mask on and i was like hmm I had on my mask. 
you know how you try to look, but you don't want to look too hard. Because you want to seem like you're not interested, but you actually are. But then I was like, here's the thing about me. I am older, but I feel younger. So sometimes I'll notice somebody and they'll be way younger than me. And I don't even realize how younger than me they are. Maybe I'm getting in that group where you start to like younger men. I think I might be. I think I might be crossing over. I used to always want an older man. But the last person I was with was a lot older than me. And I actually didn't like that as much as I thought. I, he was like 10 years. I used to think I wanted somebody 10 years older than me. But the older I get, the older they get. <laughs> I'm actually like, I don't actually want somebody 10 years older than me at this point. Because I want more kids. So I need him to be. And the guys that I'm starting to like notice that stand out are younger. The ones who stare me down and are so bold and aggressive obviously are always older. But um, anyway, point is this. I think I'm getting into the cougar age group because I'm starting to notice the younger men. And those are the ones that I want to talk to. The ones that are younger than me. <laughs> I'm like, I want him to say something to me. This old man is staring me down. I don't want him to. I'm like, ah, please don't say nothing to me. Don't say one word. Let me break eye contact real quick. I want this young boy over here to say something because he is cute. I saw this young boy today. He looked just like this. Um, and that's probably why I thought he was so cute. I promise he looked like this guy that I was with when I was in um, high school. And he looked just like him back then. Because the guy I was with in high school don't look the same no more, obviously, now that we're older. We were talking about 20 years later. He don't even look like that no more. But this dude looked just like he did. That's when I left out of there. I was like, he probably real young. Because he looked just like the guy from high school. And I was so in love with him in high school. This was my first love. You know, puppy love. Anyway, point is this. He ain't say nothing to me. I went outside the barbershop. I was wiping William off, getting him together. And I took my mask off. And I was like, let me linger a little bit. Because if somebody wants to talk to me, instead of them trying to do it in the barbershop, because I was the only woman in there, in front of all these people... They could just come out and talk to me because I'm literally right here. I'm going to linger for a little bit and get them an opportunity. And nobody said anything to me, right? Including the young boy. The young boy came out and then he left. Now, in that moment, I could have been like, dang. I'm, I'm going to be honest. What The first thought that went through my mind was he probably saw what I was driving and didn't want to say nothing to me. <laughs> I always think that. But then I was like, no, Sarita, don't say that. Because the one who God is sending is going to be on your level. He's not going to care about what you drive because he's going to be driving something too. And we both going to be driving something nice. But I always think that because sometimes when I come out and I'm looking to see, and then I see them getting into something busted, and I'm like, oh, I'm glad he didn't say nothing to me anyway. Because whatever he riding is busted. And I'm not riding in nothing busted. So I'm glad you ain't say nothing. Here's the whole point, though. I did not get discouraged. I did not get sad. It was something that happened. And, you know, if I was in a place where I was all emotional about being single, I would have, I would have, that moment could have bothered me because nobody said nothing to me. And I'm used to people saying something to me, by the way. I'm used to, especially in a barbershop. If nobody says nothing to you nowhere, let me tell you where you can count on somebody saying something to you. Somebody approaching you, asking for your phone number, saying, hey, beautiful. The barbershop, outside of the barbershop, Walmart. <laughs> and sometimes like um, a hair store. Why do dudes always be outside the hair store? I don't know. Maybe because sometimes the hair store be right beside a car, um, like an oil change station. But usually, if I'm leaving the hair store, there's some dude that got something to say. Walking around Walmart, somebody going to have something to say. Or going to the barbershop. You can count on that. If you having a bad day, you feel like you're not cute. Girl, just go into Walmart. Put on them lashes and that wig you was talking about earlier. And go strut down aisle seven. <laughs> Somebody is going to say something to you. Now, they're not going to be the one that God is sending probably nine times out of ten they not i have never heard an amazing love story because somebody met in the walmart i never as a matter of fact the only love story that i know where they met in the grocery store they divorced today and they were not godly people 
the godly people I know met at like some type of event conference or something like that. They met some kind of up and up. They have a, a story, a up and up story. It's never like we met, you know, in aisle 10 or the, or the parking lot or the barbershop or, you know, outside the hair store. Them dudes that you meet there, they be the main ones. Hey, beautiful. Ugh. Hey. I know you hear me. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> I know she heard me. <laughs> yes, I did. Mm -hmm. Not interested. But, you know, you will get some attention is my whole point. You know, you're having a bad day. Go walk around Walmart. You'll be now. Target ain't the same. You go on Target, you're gonna, you know, you're gonna be just as ignored <laughs> in Target. But if you go to Walmart, it don't even have to be on a good day. Don't even have to be trying. Somebody gonna say something to you, make you feel better. All right, ladies. But that is not where you find your value and your worth. You find your value and your worth in God because you are a new creation in Christ Jesus. So it doesn't matter if anybody says something to you at Walmart or at the barbershop or not. You know that you are a beautiful woman and your husband is going to find you on his own without your assistance, by the way. Because he is going to be a man of God led by the Spirit of God just like you. And you guys are going to cross paths at the perfect, perfect time that God has ordained. Because the Bible says... Um. It says that um, in your due season, right? What does the scripture say? It says, um, oh man, we all have a due season. I quote the scripture all the time. How come I can't remember it right now? Because I'm up here playing. Galatians 6 and 9. <clears throat> it says in the New King James Version. So let's start at verse 8. This is actually pretty good. Galatians chapter 6 verse 8 through 10 says, For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. So for all those women who say, It don't matter if he not saved, I'm saved, and blah, blah, blah. Okay, go ahead. If you sow to the flesh, you will reap corruption. But he who sows to the spirit, will of the spirit reap everlasting life and let us not grow weary in well-doing let me let me read this verbatim let us not grow weary while doing good for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart so in due season you and i will reap meaning me and all of you looking at me right now will be married women. We're going to reap. At the beginning of this video, I talked to you about interceding for your future husband. You're going to reap. Sow to the spirit. Pray. Decree the word of God over his life. Pray over your own life. In due season, you will reap. As long as you don't grow weary, grow weary. And lose heart. Another translation says if you don't faint. I don't know what translation that is. But let's read this in the Amplified. <clears throat> if you don't faint. If you don't give up. If you don't throw the towel in. And say you know what. I'm tired of waiting. I'm tired of listening to you Sarita. I'm going out with old buddy. Because he here. He want me. He like me. I don't care if he smoke. I don't care if he drink. I don't care if he don't know the Lord. As long as he here. He treat me good. He could just. If you sow to the flesh, you will reap of the flesh corruption. In the Amplified, it says, For he who sows to his own flesh, the lower nature, sensuality, will from the flesh reap decay and ruin and destruction. But he who sows to the spirit will from the spirit reap eternal life. And let us not lose heart and grow weary and faint. In acting nobly and doing right. Let us not faint from our celibacy walk. Let us not faint from having our standards and decreeing and declaring the word of God and believing God. Let us not faint because it is right to do those things, right? It says from acting nobly 
being Christians and acting like Christian women, living godly, righteous lifestyles, and doing right. It is right to believe and trust God. It is not right to believe and trust your feelings or what everybody else is doing or what everybody else is saying. It was some carnal, so-called Christian relationship expert is saying, but they're not saying nothing that God says. They only saying things that sound right to you because you are a desperate, lonely woman. No. Do not become a desperate and lonely woman. Do not grow weary. Do not faint. Continue to do what's right. Decree the word. Stand. The Bible says, after you've done all, stand. Stand in faith. Oh, let me share. I'm going to share this with you and then I'm going to go. I promise I'm leaving after I say this last thing. So, <clears throat> the other day, William had mentioned something about um, wanting, I think, brothers and sisters. Something he wanted, brothers and sisters, the father. Something I think it's, I think it was brothers and sisters. And I said, well, we just have to pray. You know, we got to ask God. Come on, let's pray. And I'm ready to grab His hand and just pray. And He said, but mommy, we already prayed. I was like, you know what? You right? And I thought I had. I, he caught me so off guard. I really, what I should have said was, okay, well, let's go ahead and thank God. But he caught me so off guard that I was like, I didn't want to tell him, well, let's pray again, blah, blah, blah. Because then, cause then you go all into, if you pray to God, did he hear you and is he going to answer or not? Because then you would have to, to a, to a child's mind, he don't understand why you would need to pray more than once. You see, the Bible talks about childlike faith. And Smith Wigglesworth was the exact same way, by the way. Smith Wigglesworth would say he would pray once and he would never pray about it again. Because if he if he had to pray again, that means he didn't have any faith the first time he prayed. He probably ain't got it the second or third time either. He believed that you were praying faith one time and that was it. And if somebody would come to him and say, can you pray for me? He would ask them, well, did you already pray? I'm not praying for you again. If you already prayed, that's it. We don't need to keep praying. Either you prayed in faith or... Or you don't have any faith. And so I didn't, you know, I listened to him. I said, you know, when you're right, we already prayed. Okay, cool. And I walked away. And, I, and he caught me. I was thinking about it, thinking about it, thinking about it. And I was like, well, dang, you know, childlike faith. Okay, Lord, childlike faith. We, we supposed to have childlike faith. And he right. If I ask you for something, I should believe. That you heard me and that is coming to pass. And I shouldn't have to keep begging over and over and over and over. Because to do that would be to say that the first time or the second time or the third time. Either I didn't believe or God didn't hear me. And we know that God's ears work, right? We know that when we pray, God receives our prayers. It's like... The prayers of the saints, they come before God. I think the Bible says a sweet smell of offering or something like that. So he always, he's he's with us. He never leaves or forsakes us. He's on the inside of us. God is not deaf. God is not deaf. And if there's a problem, it will be on our end. So then I'm like, all right, I'm, I am a woman of faith, Lord. You told me, God told me this in prayer years ago, that I was a great, and he said I was a woman of great faith. He said, Siri, you are a woman of great faith. And I was like, all right, Lord, well, if I got great faith, then let me go speak to some of these mountains. And I started decreeing, and declaring, speaking to mountains. And some of the mountains moved and some of them didn't. And I was like, well, Lord, you said I was a woman of great faith. Now, here's what I have learned since then. Great faith doesn't mean that stuff happens instantaneous. Great faith just means that things, your faith produces great things. It means that you don't produce the average with your faith. You produce great things with your faith. It does not mean, though, that those things are going to happen overnight. I'm a woman of great faith. It is great faith that you guys are here. Because I have great faith. I believe that I'm called, I'm chosen, and I believe that God is sending millions of women uh, to read the books and then also to sit underneath my teaching. It is great. It doesn't mean it's happening overnight, though. 
But great faith will bring you here. And when you look up next year and I'm having an event and there's a thousand women in front of me, great faith will have produced that. Great faith is going to produce this amazing man of God that I'm praying to heaven down. <laughs> I've been decreeing and declaring the word of God over his life. It is great faith that is going to, it is great faith that keeps me in faith and in front of you, bold as I am, unmarried. You know, people have came in here. They don't come a lot, but people have came in here over the years. Are you married? Well, how are you going to say anything? It's because I'm not married that I do say what I say. Because if I was if I was already married, it would discount a lot of things. Because people would say, you don't understand, Sarita. You don't get it. <clears throat> because I am not married, I understand and I get it and I can say what I say. Because I am not married and I have been celibate and living holy for all of these years. Right? There is evidence that I believe what it is that I speak and that I teach. Otherwise, I would have already got married. It's not hard. It's not hard to get any, whatever dude wants you, just get him, be with him, stay with him and marry him. That, that is not hard. It takes faith to turn somebody down. That is a good man. It takes faith to walk out on your baby daddy. When you find out you're pregnant, you break up with him. It takes faith to do that. People don't understand. Don't even make sense. Why would you do that? If you're pregnant, just stay with him, work it out. No, my faith says. I should have never even got pregnant by this dude. And I'm certainly not just going to settle for this for the rest of my life. I'm going to stay with this person because he, baby, because he got me pregnant for the rest of my life. I have to suffer under his hand of abuse. No, it takes faith to say, I'm out of here. I'm going to do this thing by myself. I'm going to be a single mom. I'm going to take the embarrassment. I'm going to take the humiliation. I'm going to take the, I told you so. I'm going to take the moments of looking stupid. I'm going to take all of that and as resilient, I'm going to bounce back. It takes faith to bounce back, get your life back on track, and then to come in front of people and tell people what you did, the mistakes you made, how you came out of it, and then to say, I'm not going to do that again. And you can sit here and watch my lifestyle. That takes faith. Because the woman who who was laughing at her face, she couldn't boldly sit up here and say these things because she'll be like, I'm not sure. How can I tell you when I'm not sure? It takes faith in God to be completely sure that you can have, you can have the Ephesians 3 and 20 relationship, marriage, and children it is that you want. It takes faith for me to boldly sit up here and say that. If you still have a period, you can have kids. It takes faith for me to say that. You know, people will be scared. You can't tell people that's the reading. You don't know what's going to happen with her. I don't know. You're right. I don't. But I know the God that I serve and I know what the word of God says. And I know that it also says that all we have to do is believe and trust and have faith and speak. And decree. there's like so many scriptures that tell us to just believe in God and God is going to do it. I'm going to believe God and I'm going to teach that women should believe God and we all should just trust that God is going to do it. It only take, it takes faith, though. It takes great faith because if not, I will be talking about something else. Like how to put on the perfect contour, how to find your undertone and pick the perfect shade of foundation. I would, I could teach that. Or cooking. I had made some earlier today. I wanted to do a video, but I didn't. But I had made some um, Old Bay and Crab angel eggs. We ain't gonna call them devil eggs, right? They angel eggs. But I had used some crab meat, some Old Bay. I had found a recipe. And they came out good. And I, I sent the picture to my mom and my sister. But if I was a woman with no faith, I would have a cooking channel somewhere. Uh, it wouldn't be cooking. It would be a hospitality because that's what I like to do. I like to host. I like to serve. I like to prepare, make things beautiful. So I would have like a hospitality channel and book. I would do that. I wouldn't be talking about this if I didn't have any faith. If I had weak faith. I'd be like, I'm not going to tell these women to have standards because I might decide one day to, you know, get rid of my standards so I can get me a man. What comment? Um, Is that Kelly? Does she see our comments? I see your comments have been the same for the past three years because I remember you almost from day one. Your comments in particular, your picture has been the same too. 
your comments are always the same. If I read your comment today or last year or a year from now, your comment is going to be the same. Except the only thing that's going to change is your age. You're going to be saying the same thing. You're going to be saying the same thing. That you're old and that you're sick. You've been saying that since 2018. Um, How many years have you been celibate? Let me, let me count the years. Okay, so... <laughs> I just put this on my bio today. I have been celibate for, it's been three years straight, but, but, okay. If you add up all the total years, it's been, okay, so it, so I became celibate in 2009, but I broke my celibacy walk three times since 2009. So, the first time I broke it was after six years. And I got pregnant. That's why I got a son. That was five years ago. Because that was in 2015. Well, it was six years ago. Um, And then I broke it again at the end of 2017. So, it was like I broke my celibacy walk. I got healed from that. Broke all the soul ties from that. And I was at a really, really good place. And then <clears throat> I made some poor choices compromise that's why i teach so strongly these dudes the dudes that i brought my celibacy walk with was a deacon and i thought we were gonna be i thought he was my husband he was telling me that i was his wife so you know while we together i was listening to him and all his deception and i brought my celibacy walk with him and then the person after that i don't like to count because after after dealing with the deacon I was such a broken woman because I was confused spiritually because of him. And I was, you know, I had a, I still had a soul tie. I was, I was hurting. And then I got with somebody like right away. Like there was no break. So I don't like to count him because I always say I was not in my right mind. Because I clearly I was not. You know, if, 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 if you knew me personally and you knew the type of men that I would deal with. And you knew about this last person, you would be like, huh? What? How? Yeah. I like to say I wasn't really in my right mind with that with that third person. And it was so close together. That's why I, sometimes I grouped them together. But, um, yeah. So, there you go. So, total. So, it's been 12. It's been 12 years, but I broke my celibacy wall three times in 12 years. Now, I said this before and I'll say it again. There is a difference between breaking your celibacy walk and just having a season where you're not having sex. I am a celibate woman. I don't have sex. So meaning I can have a boyfriend and not have sex with him because I've had boyfriends and not had sex with them since then. That's how you know you're celibate. Saying that you're not having sex is saying like, well, I have a man, but we either have not had sex yet, but we're going to, or I don't have a man. That's why I'm not doing anything right now. But when I get one, oh yeah, we going to get it in. That's not the same as being celibate. You understand what I'm saying? So when I am dating and when I'm in a relationship, I do not have sex because I am celibate. But I broke my celibacy wall three times in 12 years, which I think is pretty good. Meaning, it could be, a, it could have been, well, it really couldn't have been worse because what happened was my standards went up. And so after the last time I broke my celibacy wall, my standards went up too. And I was like, I am not... Because here's the thing, I, I'm still walking with God, which means that God is still teaching, revealing, showing things to me. So my standards go up because God is showing me more. Like what I talked about earlier, as far as a husband raising the kids, God is teaching me that. So now my standards are higher and I'm expecting a husband who can teach my children how to worship and love God. I didn't have that standard before because I didn't have that revelation I didn't have that knowledge or that understanding, Right. So, the longer that I am unmarried and the longer that I am walking with God, the more my standards go up. They don't go down because of the clock. They go up because I am growing. I am growing. I am learning. I'm also growing in other ways, like maturing, you know, as a person, you know. I'm growing in my business. I'm growing in my bank accounts. So, with all of that, the standards go up. You know what I mean? I'm growing in my expectation and my experiences. So even with all of that, my standards go because it's a certain type of man that's not going to fit in with your lifestyle, depending on where your lifestyle is right now. 
And when, when I was, you know, not living this lifestyle, when I didn't have these, like, uh, for example, William is in private school. He cannot go to public school. He cannot. He will not. If something happened and he can't go to a Christian private school, he will be homeschooled. And I will have to do whatever I have to do to make sure that that happens. Because he cannot go. Because I have a revelation of what goes down in public school that he don't need to be exposed to at such a young and impressionable age. He will not. Now, let's say before I had a revelation of, of all of that and before you, when that was still like an option that he can go to, I could be with a man who was like, um, I don't believe in, I don't want no, I don't know. I'm just making this up. But let's say I was with a man who was like, I don't want to pay to send him to school. He can go to public school for free. Or he was like, I don't want, um, what, what did they used to say when I was little, when I was younger? They used to talk about the kids that went to prep school and private school and they used to call them names. You know, like they were corny and cheesy and nobody, if black people didn't wear sweaters tied around their neck. Only the prep school kids do that and you didn't want to be that kind of kid. You know what I mean? They would make they would make it seem like it was something wrong with private school kids. So let's say I was still with that mindset and it was something wrong. I would be like, my kid ain't going to no private school. He want a public school because he going to be black. He going to be, you know, one of the people. He going to be us. He going to know his culture. He going to be regular. And that's stupid. He not going to public school so he can see boys kissing boys and girls kissing girls and transgender and all this confusion running around. And people don't want to talk about God and don't believe and all this religious uh, rebellion. He don't. Why he need to be in the midst of that while he's trying to learn one plus one equal two? He trying to learn geography and calculus. He don't need to be in the midst of all of these uh, satanic influences while he's just trying to learn how to read and comprehend. He need to be around other people who are not cussing and who are having a standard. You know, at the school he go to, they can't even say the word stupid. Stupid is considered a bad word at that school. I said stupid. I say stupid all the time. Dang. Y'all are strict around here. But I like that. Because if they can't say that, then that means that that school is also not going to allow them to say other vulgar and belligerent things that children will say. Because they get it from their parents. And if you are a parent who sends your kids to that school and they don't even let them say the word stupid. But let's say at home, y'all would just but wow, but y'all wanted to send your kids to a Christian school. The parents wouldn't want to send their kids there. Because the school would bring so much conviction to the parents. The parents will feel judged and they wouldn't want to send their kids there. But the fact that you send your kids there and you know this, it means that we are in we are in good company. You know? You are going to a school, and I'm not saying that all the families are perfect or the school is perfect, but I'm saying that at least I know that he's going to a school that is not celebrating Halloween, okay? Or even a a, a trunk and, what do they do? Trunk and, at the church, trunk and treat, and think that that's okay. That's not okay neither. None of that crap is okay. So, I when I went to the walkthrough at that school and I asked them, do y'all celebrate Halloween? Do y'all, okay, do y'all do a, a dress-up day? Because that's what they want to say. We don't do Halloween, but we'll do a dress-up day. Do y'all do a dress-up day? Okay. No, we don't do that. I said, do y'all do Valentine's Day? No, we don't do that either. Oh, okay. I'm, sign me up. Because I don't have a problem with Valentine's Day. Halloween is the big one. But I'm like, if y'all don't even do Valentine's Day? Yes, yeah, sign me up. The more like um, uh, um, in alignment with the word, the better. Because that's what happened with uh, the prophet Samuel. Samuel could not be raised. You know when Hannah had her other five kids, they grew up in the house with Elkanah and Hannah. They didn't get sent away. Only the prophet Samuel got sent away to be raised by the priest Eli so that he could be who God needed him to be. So I said, yeah, go ahead and separate, separate William. Is, he's separate. He's separate and apart. Let him go somewhere where other people are that are also separate and apart. And he will not go to no public school. Now, I'm telling you all of that because why? Why am I telling you? I got all off track. She asked me, how many years have I been celibate? I don't even know why I started talking about private school. I think because I was talking about my standards and the man and faith.
I'm saying, Kelly, to change your words. But in order to really change your life, you are going to need to do some deep spiritual work. I really hope that you will join our fast. But in order for you to get healing, if you say you need healing and it's been years and years and years and years and years and, years and you ain't got no healing, there is something that's going on with you. There's a deficit in the word and your understanding and your belief. Because we know that Jesus Christ is our healer. So if there's something going on with you, it is not on Jesus. It's on you. And you also be struggling with the fact that you're older and you're single. Like those kind of things. Whatever the whatever the, the struggle is, it's air. It's air stuck right here in my chest. <laughs> It's not coming down. It's not It's not coming up. It's not going down. But in order for you to change your life so you can start to say different things and start to see different things, you need to spend a lot of time in the Word of God, with God, and get clear. Read some books. Turn some stuff off. Turn off the TV. Don't listen to Steve Harvey Morning Show. I don't know if you listen to that or not, but you said you're 50, so you might listen to Steve Harvey Morning Show. Don't listen to Steve Harvey. He don't know what he's talking about. Just listen to people that are giving you a good word of faith teaching. And that is it. Read some books that are filled with the word of God. Go get my books. I got 11 of them. If you read through, I have 11 books, but there's only um, seven that are available. Is it seven on Amazon? Or is it six? Let me go and look. Because some of my books are digital. And you can't get them on Amazon because they are digital. Um, but if you read How to Pray for Your Future Husband, The Single Woman's Prayer Book, The Prophetic Woman, and Manifesting Supernatural Childbirth, and The Proverbs on Our Woman's Devotional. Because you don't have to read How to Heal a Broken Heart because your heart is not broken, right? But I promise you, if you start reading this one, two, three, four, five, if you read five of my books back to back to back, go, oh girl. If you read the books and go to the scriptures and follow the coaching, the guidance, and the teaching that I give you in the books, if you literally do the work that I put in those books to do, your life is going to transform. I promise you. If I was you, if I was anybody looking at me right now, and if I was stuck and not able to get ahead in any season or area of my life. I would just spend some very focused time with the Lord. Working on that area. Shut everything else down. And I would focus in until I made progress. I The reason I'm, I'm rebranding right now and I'm redoing my website. I've been wanting to redo this website for over a year and a half. I don't like my website. If you go to Sarita Fox. That's why I don't never send y'all to SaritaFox.com. Because I don't like it. So... I moved and I started working on my business and, and figuring out what I'm going to be doing. Um, you know, just making my, my short term business plan and everything. And I was like, oh, this website. And then um, I, I had a thought, Sarita, you know how sometimes you fuss at yourself. You've been talking about redoing this website for a year and a half. Either you're going to do it or you're not. Then I was like, well, I don't have the money in my account. And then the Lord was like. You have everything it is that you need to do everything it is that I've called you to do. And if you have a desire in your heart, there is a way for you to bring that into manifestation. I've already given you everything, right? I do have the money. I just needed to find the option that fit within my budget. Instead of looking at another option, there was a there was an option to redo my website that was $10,000. There was an option that was forty five hundred. That's the one I really wanted. And then there was an option that was three thousand. And then there was another option that I saw. They had a they had a Black Friday sale, and I was gonna take advantage of that sale to get my website redone, and I didn't do it. And we in another year. Black Friday was last year in November. I was like, I'm getting it. I looked at a DM. I said to them, I said, I'm getting this. I didn't get it. Price went up. Now we're in a whole nother year. And the Lord was like, that option that you should have got Black Friday last year, you should have got it done then. Stop, talk, stop complaining about where you are. You don't like your website. You don't like your website. Okay, you don't like it. Do something about it. Serena, stop making excuses. You don't have the money. Yes, you do. 
you don't have no option. Yes, you do. You just looking at this one option. You looking at one option that you really, really want. Because I don't have 4500 to spend on a website. I do not have that now. Right now, I do not. Because I'm about to go to this fancy hotel. See, I see, and I did it, right? If I choose to spend a couple thousand dollars on a vacation, but I could spend a couple thousand dollars on my website. You see, it's, it's my choice. I have chosen experience over tangible. And I was like, eh, I really want this experience. Because, number one, it's going to bless me personally. Number two, I want William to have this exposure. I don't want William to, when he gets older, start to experience really nice things and then feel either uncomfortable like my mama. My mama is so uncomfortable. When I bring her around five-star whatever, it could be a car, it could be a restaurant, it could be a hotel, it could be, what did I give her? An iPhone. I gave her an iPhone, y'all. Brand new iPhone. Do y'all know this lady gave it back? Who does that when you got an Android? I don't even know what she got. I, I just know it's a Samsung something. Who gives back a... Who don't want to... I said, my gosh, you upgrade. It was for Mother's Day, I think. She gave it back. She said, I don't know how to use that. I said, I'm going to... I said, it's not hard. Okay? It's not... It's just a phone. It's not like a computer. And by the way, you don't have to do anything. She's like, I don't want a new number. You don't need to get a new number. I said, mom, all you got to do is... Um, um, connect this together, put your SIM card in there and then transfer. And I said, I'm going to do all that for you, right? Because I want you to be able to FaceTime. That was my, my thing was I wanted to be able to FaceTime her. But then I also wanted to upgrade. I'm thinking I'm being a blessing. She gave that iPhone back. She rejected. There was a place that I wanted us to go every year for Mother's Day, right? It is this beautiful restaurant in Baltimore, in the harbor. It's overlooking the water. They have a live jazz, jazz band. And they have a buffet with crab and shrimp omelets. So it's expensive. It's $50 a person. Which, really, that is not even a lot. But it could, I, I could see how it could seem to be a lot for brunch. But for all that you're getting, y'all heard what I said, it's on the water. So you're overlooking the water there's a live jazz band. There is shrimp and crab omelets on a buffet. And by the way, the buffet takes up the whole restaurant. So it's like this brunch buffet. And it's not like a cheap Golden Corral buffet. It's like fancy stuff on the buffet. And it's $50 a person. She don't, do she have to pay for that? No, it's Mother's Day. I said, Ma, I want us to go to this beautiful buffet restaurant on the water. Fancy. You're going to love it. Jazz band, crab omelet, water. We went. Once she found out how much it was, she was like, I don't want to go back there no more. It's too expensive. You're not paying for it. Hello? <laughs> it's Mother's Day. I am paying for it. I don't really want to go. It just costs too much. No, we can go somewhere else. This is the place I'm going to go to that's on the water. We went to this place, y'all, and I was like, we, we, we in redneck country? What is Where are we at? It's not even clean all the way in here. I'm like, oh my God. She is having a good old time. Mm, this is so good. I'm like, this buffet, first of all, it's like one little table in the corner. It ain't all that clean. We in the boonies. Yeah, we overlooking some river, but this is nothing compared to where I wanted to she is so uncomfortable with this luxury. We went to this hotel one time. This is my last story about my mom. I'm going to stop talking about her. <laughs> we went to this hotel one time. It was it was not even that fancy. It was like a four-star hotel. But to her, it was so fancy. And she was complaining about everything. Mm, they got this. Mm, why they got that? Mm, why they got to do this? Mm, why they I said, why are you complaining? Again, she was not paying. I was paying for her own room. We weren't even sharing a room. I was paying. Why are you complaining about everything? You're not even paying. I ain't paying. <laughs> I'm treating you. You need to enjoy. And I was, and she complained one time too many. I was like, I don't know why you keep complaining like this. Like you, and you complain about nothing. Like you're making complaints about stuff that is not even. I'm the fancy five star person. If anybody's gonna complain, I am because my expectations of service is up here. <clears throat> and by the way, I'm paying. What are you complaining about, lady? 
And she was like, she said, Serena, I'm sorry, but she said, this place is so fancy. I'm just a little nervous. She actually said that. She said, I'm nervous because this place is so fancy. And I might be complaining a little bit, but it's just my nerves. And I said, okay. Now I understand you a little bit more, mom. All these years later. Thank you for telling me that. Complain away. Now when she complains, I just know it's because it's fancy and she's nervous. Because she's nervous in, in luxury because she's not used to that. She haven't experienced that. And um, even when I try to expose her, she just can't even receive it. I'm like, what is? why would you give me back an iPhone? Where is that phone? It's sitting over there. <laughs> what am I going to do with it? <clears throat> I'm sitting up here trying to think. What am I going to do with it? I got an extra iPhone. I got two extra iPhones at this point. Um, but anyway, so <clears throat> the reason I'm t the reason I was saying that was because if there's something that you want to change in your life, you can do it. I was telling you that because I was, I was saying I have money to spend on my website or take a trip, and I chose to take a trip because I want to expose William. So beautiful luxury thing so he can get used to it. Um, I don't want him to be like my mama. I want him to be well used to it. He is. He get used to it. Cause um his his little expectations, you know, the cleaning people come, the when the clean ladies come. She didn't do this, this, this. I'm like, boy, you are spoiled. Most children your age don't have a, a cleaning lady. So for you to be, you know, wanting to give out instructions, he's like, when she get here, I need to tell her to look at this. And I'm like, what? do you know how blessed you are? Because when I was five years old, I didn't have no cleaning lady that I can give instructions to. Shoot, all these expectations you got, people servicing you, and you are five. Anyway. <laughs> so that's the whole point. Do something about it. I, I went all the way around again. Um. Okay, thank you, Rokita, for letting me know you went to a private school. Yeah, put them on it. Oh, by the way, Janelle, don't be, I was a little bit um, intimidated because private schools are expensive. However, what I have found is that the Christian private schools give bigger financial aid discounts than the regular private school. I didn't know that. Because the regular private school, they'll give you a little 10% and you like, this is a little $80. I need you to take a couple hundred off of this tuition. Um, or a thousand, <laughs> but the Christian private schools, they will drop that tuition. I was blown away by how much they dropped the tuition for the summer camp that he's in. It should have been three something, I think a week. Cause I was like, he's not going to be able to do that. 300 a week. That's more than I pay for daycare. And, um, cause he's moving obviously from daycare to regular school. Cause he's going into kindergarten. So I was like, I'm not paying no 300 a week. I don't pay that right now for preschool. Why would I pay that much? But then when I, and then I said, let me just ask about financial aid. Cause I didn't even think, I, I didn't want to ask. I don't know why I didn't want to, but I didn't want to ask. But one day I was like, do you guys offer financial aid? They was like, yeah. And since you got approved for a regular kindergarten, we're going to automatically approve you. And we're going to bring that price from 300 to $85. They took the price from three, I think it was three twenty five to eighty five dollars a week for summer camp. I said I would have known this. All see all of that intimidation. You'd be like, oh, it's gonna be so expensive. I'm looking at my budget like, oh god. And all you gotta do is ask, and they're like, turn in your paperwork, Janelle. Because you are a single mom to turn your paperwork in and you can get some amazing financial aid. And it is actually a lot more affordable for a private school, for a Christian private school, than what you probably think it would be. Because you can't go by the prices they put on the website. You see? I was going by the prices on the website and I was like, oh, good. <laughs> that is a lot. <laughs> 
But when I contact the dude, they brought that price down. She said, I don't listen to Steve Harvey. I was just joking, girl. <laughs> oh, Lordy. Oh, Sarah said she gave her mom a TV and she gave it back. She doesn't want internet. It was, I don't feel so alone. I don't know what's up with these ladies. When my, you know what? I have decided when my child, because he's gonna be more, he gonna be wealthy at a way earlier age than me. When he wants to give me Chanel bags, I am going to receive. He want to send me on a on a five star vacation for a week, and the Caymans. I am going to receive. He going to give me these diamond earrings. He going to be old enough to have all the money to do it. I am not giving back none of his old luxury gifts. I'm receiving it all. I'm not going to be like my mom. All uncomfortable. Oh, I'm so uncomfortable. No, he going to be like, Mom, I got a private jet coming to pick you. Okay, I'm there. I'm going to be praising God for blessing my children. <laughs> I'm receiving it. I'm not giving nothing back. I understand these ladies giving stuff back. I, just, I, just, I don't get it. How you gonna get back? Yeah, Janelle. Apply for that financial aid, girl. And you don't be wanting to tell people all your business. I get it, but it's worth it. Cause I was like, oh, this financial aid form. Y'all wanna see what? <sighs> you want me to tell you about what? Ugh, I don't wanna tell you all my business, but it's worth it. Um, I'm in Virginia. They'll also give discounts if siblings are at the same school. That's true. She prefers her three inches TV instead of the 40 inch flat screen. I don't get it. But you know, some of them older folks, <laughs> they be set in their ways too. Just like if you try to move your elderly relatives into, um, let's say you have a home and you have a wing. And they can move out of the old 30, 40, 50 year old raggedy falling apart house into the wing in your beautiful home. And they feel uncomfortable in the wing. They they would rather be in their old, you know, home that's falling apart. Is that whatever, whatever that is. I don't know what that what that's called in somebody's mind. That being comfortable with something that is like, I guess that's what it is. It's their comfort. Now, I don't understand what it is about these experiences, though. Like, with my mom, it's not a comfort. What What is the comfort? You want to stay at a, you have to stay at a raggedy hotel and stay at a nice one because you're more comfortable? You know, and I, I put you up in a place where marble, there's only one place that I took her to. Marble bathroom, marble floor, room service, water view that she loves. Only one. Every other place, though. She be complaining. This, that, this. I'm like, lady, we are in luxury. You supposed to be enjoying, not complaining. But there's only one place where she was like, oh, yes. That is, I was like, um, we went to Baltimore um, just for one day. And I was like, I'm going to drive back home because I just didn't want to pay for one night in that hotel. If we stand for a couple days, okay. But for one night, I'm going to just drive back home. She was like, no, let's stay there. It's so nice. I was like, really? She said, yeah, we could split it. We can get in the same room. We could split it. I was like, you are so excited. And I thought you didn't like staying in these fancy places. I said, because I wasn't going to pay all that money for one day. I was just going to drive back home. It's an hour and a half from my house to bottom. I was like, save my little money. I'm not trying to spend all that money for one night um, at the hotel. Because I'm like this. Either I'm going to stay at a fancy place or I'm going to come home. <laughs> I'm not going to stay in no low budget place. I'm not staying in no cheap place. I'm going to just come home. But uncomfortable with change. Hmm. Yeah, that's probably what it is. Yeah. That's probably what it is. All right, y'all, I'm leaving. I'm glad that a lot of you were blessed. And for those of you who hung in there with me, you know, at the beginning of this video, I said, I'm going to be up here for 10 minutes. And I think it's been two hours. So at the beginning of the video, you're going to be like, she said 10 minutes, but it says on here, 180. <laughs> 
my intention was just to encourage you to pray for your future husband. Um, I had not, I talked about praying for your future husband for probably the first hour. And then I answered questions. That's what threw me off. I shouldn't have answered those questions that was down here. Um, she said, I love when you do your super late night videos when you're in the bed. Girl, I be looking so a mess. I'm, I might do them again. Turn me a, a filter on. <laughs> Turn on a good filter. And then I could, Because I was doing them late night videos. And then I would look at my page and be like, ugh, girl. You can't be doing these in the bed. This is so unprofessional. <laughs> but I don't know. We'll see. That's that's because you know what I would I would be reading my Bible. That's why it would be so good. Cause when I'm upstairs in my bed, William is in the he's sleep, he in the bed, I'm in the word, I'm getting all this revelation, and then I hit the live stream button. Uh that that's just like fresh, fresh anointing. And um then I had to stop doing that because I was like, I I wanna enjoy the revelation with me and God. I don't want to start jumping on a live stream. So if you want to know what she's talking about, if you go stroll through my IGTV and you see some videos where I'm looking raggedy and it's all dark, <laughs> it's not no lighting, there's no makeup, my hair ain't done, that's why I stopped. All right, you guys. Thank you for joining me. I hope you have a blessed and amazing weekend. Send me your testimonies, okay? I want to hear testimonies of you guys getting um, engaged, you guys getting found. I need to follow up with a couple of ladies because there were some people last year. It's one in particular I'm thinking about. She was telling me she was getting engaged and I never heard nothing else. Um, You hear William sleeping in some of them old videos? They must be real old if he was in my bed because he's been in his own bed since he turned three. Sometimes I let him sleep in my bed when he was four, but not no more. He way too big. He be kicking me, hitting me. He be on my side. I'm like, get up and go in your room because I can't deal with this abuse. I'm trying to sleep. And you are too. He all strong too. You know, them little boys be strong when they get, they get bigger and lanky. And I'm like, where's all this strength in the room? Get out of my bed. So you must be talking about an old video. Bye, you guys. Have a good one.